Um, uh, Kendall Martinez is going to talk about how to support in stable. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, really, I'm trying to uh, sort of uh, run a meeting about uh, how we improve hardware support in Debian Stable. Uh, uh, yeah, I think on. I said not in the, uh, yeah. 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 Um, so if you install a, if you install Stable today on a, on a new uh, laptop or desktop system, you probably won't get any wire support and you probably won't get XLA for graphics, you just have to be uh, X user driver, uh, which is pretty poor really. You're, you're only going to have to install, uh, you can kind of have to go in the back box and install a film from there or get on the stage or something like that. Um, and the Debian installer doesn't. There's now have a, we have an option to enable that force and get going from there. So that's not really a good, uh, not really a good experience. We, we're not, we're not going to get many people using stable without uh, many sort of non-expert users getting stable. So we need to improve this. Uh, we do currently uh, manage to backport some drivers uh, in stable updates, um, but it is not. This doesn't seem to be. Well, this, this is very difficult for Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. Uh, mm -hmm. So Wi-Fi and uh, graphics. It's, um, uh, the those subsystems of the kernel tend to change quite a lot, and so you can't just take one driver. Or you possibly could if you're already next driver in those in those subsystems and you know how to do it. But it's, uh, um, yeah, it's, it's very difficult. Now there is this uh, compact drivers uh, project that tries to do that, backport everything, or pretty much everything, uh, from the current version of Linux to uh, so that they can be used with any uh, base film version. Um, could we use that? I don't know. Um, there's, um, there's a real um, there's a risk if you, if you take all these drivers uh, from say Linux 3.10 that there are going to be regressions uh, and of course the whole point of, of using Debian stable is, is uh, it doesn't change too much and so you don't get regressions how are we going to square um, how do we square supporting the new hardware with avoiding regressions I don't know there are, there are several options possible so uh, I'd like to sort of uh, throw it open to, uh, to the people to, to comment on, on uh, you know, what, what they think. Yeah, so I'm still do work for him, I'll start. Uh, uh, do... uh, can we just... Uh, what about just using newer kernels, which do exist, um, and we can simply make available relatively easily, i.e. Like not trying to backport things, mm -hmm. just use a newer one, because the kernels are quite well. Um, you know, partition from the rest of the system, so you can generally expect stuff to work if you just upgrade the kernel, can't you? Mostly, but there are, you know, there are, there are always regressions. Uh, so I don't think we, I don't think we could reasonably, we don't have the kind of testing resources available that we could. I don't think we do, but we could reasonably say we could turn into a reason now. Okay, um, so you want to consider. How do you deal with backporting stuff as opposed to just saying if you've got new hardware, you need a new kernel? So no, well, that is, that is an option, but we then need to make it easier for people to uh, install that, keep it up to date, keep security supported. Um. So I know. <laughs> I know for the GPU drivers, um, a bunch of distributions have had success with basically just taking the whole DRM slash directory, copying it over, and then you cherry pick a couple of other patches. Um, you know, like there was one core change in read ten or so for the the, uh, the new mutex type, um, and that seems like a potential middle ground between let's update the whole kernel in our stable tree 
instead, well, let's just pull all the new graphics driver stuff because mm -hmm. we have no idea which pieces we need and which pieces we don't need because we probably need all of it um, for a better graphics score. Um, you know, would that be an acceptable solution? Well, it might be, uh, but then we have to we have, we'd have to be very careful to avoid uh, regressions in support for the uh, for the tips that are already supported. Uh, we might be able to do that, but we would need to have some kind of uh, we would need to make a real uh, big effort to to get to to make sure that users do test uh, do test these and we catch most of those regressions before. Uh, the risk is that you get, uh, if you say, uh, please test this, see if it works, that you get uh, you get most of the feedback from people whose, graphics got, uh, whose chips weren't supported. And they say, great, my, my chip is now supported, it works fine. But you don't get it from the people who are already successful using the current version. And we always have regressions. Sorry? We always have regressions. We do, regressions. yes. Um, so, so one solution, um, I'm Eric Anholt from the Intel graphics driver team. Um, so one solution we've been talking about um, implementing in the user space side of the graphics driver is, you know, there's this conflict between we really want to be able to get the current version of our driver for the new chipsets into old versions of distributions, um, but no distribution wants to take the new driver because yeah, you know, you broke the old generation on some application and you're not getting around to fixing it yet. So um, one of the ideas we had was, okay, let's take um, the, the libgl loader, the loader of the graphics driver, have it look at the PCI ID of your chipset and decide which file to open based on that. Yeah. And then you could have, you know, Debian could choose to have the current generation of chipsets load the current version of the driver that already supports them, and then when newer chipsets come along later, you would just update to say, oh yeah, and all these new chipsets load this new driver off to the side that was built using a newer version of Mesa, and then you don't have regressions because otherwise it didn't yeah. work at all. Yeah. Actually, I never understood why uh, I915, that those drivers haven't been split, um, so that the refactoring to support new chips doesn't has no effect on it's the other one. so um, we actually did just split off the remainder of the 915 code from 965. We used to have a big pile of shared code, about 15,000 lines. Uh, uh, we split that into it's down to 10,000 lines between the two um, after deleting a bunch on both sides. Uh, so it was a big increase in code we would have to maintain. Um, you know, we're talking about an addition of I think it was five or 10,000 lines of code to, to maintain for us. Um, but now when we modify the new driver, we don't have to break the old one. Right. Um, in Mesa, yeah. Mm -hmm. And we're, we've, we talk constantly about, well, you know, is there another split we want to do? But the question is always which generation, because no matter what, you're yes. going to end up duplicating, yeah. you know, tens of thousands of lines of code. Mm -hmm. And, you know, once we do that, basically you wouldn't end up fixing anything on older drivers. And we do have but that's contributors. Fine, because... We have contributors improving older drivers yeah. currently, um, which is pretty cool. Like being able to run new applications on your old Iron Lake system from three years ago now. You know, that's that's neat that we're doing that in open source software, I think. Um, and I think we want to make that possible. But yeah, for a stable distribution, I think you want to avoid pulling in those newer feature updates. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, you know, is matching based on PCI ID going to be enough for people to say, yeah, we could pull in new Mesa for new chipsets and keep the old stuff for the old stuff? Uh, if you can if you can make that work, yeah. Um, I don't know how that would work in the in the at the kernel level, how you deal with having two I nine fifteen drivers I or something like that. I think the worst part for the kernel is not going to be the nine fifteen driver, which you could presumably you know, do some said job to subset all your mm. symbols, but mm -hmm. there's also the shared DRM core, which is yes. Additionally, these days the doing uh, uh, communication between the different DRM drivers. I don't think you could do that split in the same way in the kernel. Right. Yeah. So does that imply two user space Mesa versions installed if you're going to choose pick a, a runtime? Yeah. Which so one you so run, you would so have so Mesa nine point one 
you know, today with the Intel up to uh, Ivy Bridge driver and the Radeon drivers and the Nubo drivers, and then you know, Stable would also end up with uh, Mesa 9.2 for uh, Bay Trail, the the next platform that's coming out that we're still building the code for. You know, so does anyone know whether we already, pa already package Mesa so you can install more than one version or not? So the, I don't know how that would get managed from the like Git uh, package version control side of things, but in terms of the installed files, it's just these DRI.so file names, and all we would, w what we need to do is add this code for having the loader look at your PCI ID and decide a different name based on that. So that's, that's my job. <laughs> Okay. Uh, we didn't really get a we didn't really get a, an answer there as about how we would deal with the DRM core changes there. I've got nothing on that one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> with newer network cards, how dangerous is that uh, to get that uh, with compatibility? Issues. As, as porting new NIC drivers uh, yeah. are less dangerous as uh, video drivers. That seems to be easier because you th there aren't so many changes in the uh, the network driver API, and, as, and since that's my day job is maintaining a network driver, I know all about the the uh, the gotchas for back back and forth compatibility there. So that's um, I won't say that Weezy is up to date with Ethernet drive support, but that's that's something I can think is is uh, easier to to uh, to support, easier to do. Okay, thank you. Um, so the compact drivers. Uh, the Compact Drivers uh, project does cover some Ethernet drivers, I think. I'm not sure exactly which. Um, what have we got there? Uh, it's hard to see. No, I don't have a list. So could we uh, could we could we perhaps have compact drivers as an option or as an extra separate package? Um, and what would that uh, what would that uh, how how could that work? What does compact drivers actually look like? I mean, what do yeah, so it's a package of um, of the. It's got newer drivers with some compatibility code so that they can build against an older uh, older kernel headers. So you would build those out of tree. Well, that's that's how it's meant to work. Um, so if we were to package that, that would uh, I suppose those drivers modules will get installed into uh, the updates directory, and thus they would override the, uh, the the drivers that was part of the Linux image package. Tried using this, it sounds plausible to me, but uh. and you need to have the um, I suppose you need to have the installer uh, work out that if you have uh, if you have such and such PCI ID, IDs present, I guess you need to have uh, discover know that with with these PCI IDs you need you'll need compact drivers. Well, someone volunteering to do that, give it a go. Would that mean having uh, a new compact driver package at each point release, and then yes, so yes, like would you update people to who 
to install with one version of Compat Driver to the new one on the next I suppose so, yeah. And so obviously there's a potential for regression the same there. Regression potential yes. as updating to a new kernel yep. entirely. But there's no there's no regression for people who didn't need it in the first place. So I don't know. It was it's it's certainly no worse than what we, what they would have at the at the moment, which is they would have the option to install a new kernel from uh, from backports, and then if they want the secu any security support, they have to keep updating that uh, as well, or anything close to security support, <laughs> because of course backports doesn't have real security support, or well, it has a little. But so do you will you get one massive compact module package, or do you get kind of compact SCSI and compact net and compact blah like? Um, well, it hasn't. As far as I know, it hasn't been. No one's attempted to package this yet. Right. Um, potentially, you could do that. Because I guess that would give you some specificity if you just had the compact SCSI or whatever. Mm. Um, Eat the mic. Eat the mic. Oh, right, <laughs> okay. Come on, speak up. How are we going to do this? Or well, raise your hand Who and wait for the mic. <laughs> Any bright ideas? None brighter than the one you've already had, it seems. <laughs> so we just need someone to volunteer to try it. Oh well, then I'll have to suppose I'll have a go at packaging combat drivers and uh, start it. Right, here comes the bar. That was quick. <laughs> 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 